looking for a job, that is, and she's dressed for it too. Tastefully, not expensively. Women, expected to look pretty and work hard. Be graceful while juggling roles. Expected to play a perfect part in society while not being given the resources and clothing to do so. Women's pockets date back to the early 17th century when women had to sew and tie bags under their dresses in order to have a practical way of carrying items around. These built-in dress pockets then turned into purses and handbags as pockets were not traditionally feminine and fashionable. Everything changed when the 20th century came around and with it, World War II. When World War II commenced and the men left for war, women took over the workforce. Function trumped fashion and women were given large pockets in their trousers. Women on the home front started working in factories supplying war materials, taking over men's positions. This was the first time in history that large pockets were socially acceptable for women. As World War II came to an end, the factories were once again filled with men, as women were laid off to make more space for them. Yes, women workers do present problems, Joe. It's tough, I know, but there are thousands of others, just like you all over the country, facing the same problems. Women were pushed into more feminine, pink-collar jobs, such as teachers, secretaries, and nurses. With feminine jobs come feminine looks, and pockets were not a part of that. Post-World War II, pockets started getting cut out of women's pants completely. I currently work at Union Bank in regulatory reporting, and I also own a business with my husband. We own a general contracting business and a drywall metal framing business. The type of company I worked at was an investment company. The industry average is 90% male, and almost all of that is white male. And our firm had a lot of women in senior positions, which is one of the reasons why I chose to work there, and then eventually got a full-time offer there. I just retired after 23 years. For a long time, I used to have male narrators, and then there was a certain point. I was working on this one movie, and I was really stuck on the film, and I, and I remember thinking, I'm going to narrate that part. And then after that, I started narrating all my own movies. So I literally found my voice. For a long time, I was one of the only women executives at Salesforce. You know, I would get invited to go to things that I wouldn't have otherwise been invited to because I was a woman. In general, like as like a STEM girl, like usually I would have to like put much more effort to get the same results, right, compared to a man. Today, the percentage of women in the workforce has grown exponentially compared to pre-war. However, when we look at certain industries such as tech, finance, film, and construction, this statistic drops. These are what we call male-dominated industries. A lot of times I felt like I was afraid to speak up. I didn't, you know, just listen in a meeting and wouldn't really talk and say things that I felt because I was afraid of being like ridiculed or put down. It's actually quite often like I sit in a meeting that everybody else or men. <laughs> I think there's a lot of unconscious bias that happens in business, not specific to technology, but because it's a very male-dominated industry, it, I think it happens more. A lot of it happens unconsciously, where people don't mean to interrupt you more, uh, they just do. Um, because maybe your voice isn't as loud as theirs. And instead of having people sort of ask you questions, people tend to just jump over you and interrupt with their own thinking. Walking on the trading floor a lot of times, I, you know, you feel sort of like, okay, tuck my shirt in, tuck my, you know, stand up straight, suck in your stomach. You know, you were worried about even how you looked, even though you shouldn't be. One of my very first performance reviews with the, the CEO and the chairman, we finished our meeting and stood up and the chairman turned to me and said, well, keep those good ideas coming out of your pretty little head. I'm like, okay, he just sees me as a female. He doesn't see me as an employee or as an analyst or the portfolio manager that I turned into. Even with more women in the workforce, they're still not receiving the same opportunities as men and women's pocket size reflects that. At a national level, women's pocket size is on average 48% shorter and 6.5% narrower than men's pockets. With so many women doing the same work as men, why can't we have the same size pockets? I never use my front pockets because you can't get anything in them. You can barely even get a credit card in them. Small pockets were suited towards fashion and not, not function, like, um, like men's clothes, you know, they have pockets in their blazers and their pants. Having full-size pockets um, in professional clothing is uh, 
it's a it's a rarity, but it's it feels I don't know feels powerful. While striving for equal rights in the workplace and in pocket size, the question becomes, how do we change the centuries of habit and ideology? How do we change our small pocket society? Everybody's perspective is different. So that, that's why like when you see all the, you know, the nominations and they're all white men, you're like, come on now, we've heard that perspective for hundreds of years. Like, get the women in, get diversity, get people from other cultures. So we just launched a program that was basically black women are mentoring white male executives. So it's reverse mentoring. So all the white men in our company now have a mentor, a young woman of color, who is just expresses to them what life looks like from their perspective. So for, for women who are in a toxic work environment, you have two options. One is to see whether there's any way to, to change it. And that's, you know, do you have, can you build up a group of allies? So to try to bring awareness and bring a shift. And if you can't change it, then you have to leave. But I hope that, I hope that we can change those toxic places too, because otherwise they'll just continue to perpetuate. I always felt like it was an advantage to be one of the only women in the room because I have a perspective and a superpower they don't have. So that was always my approach. Like, I'm a woman, I have immense power. Wait, what's the so point of the pockets to thing? My four pockets on my I thought they can get that far. <laughs> you have no pockets. Women's pocket size is a restriction from a time when women didn't have a voice. But now the world acknowledges the inequalities that women face. So let's work together to become a big pocket society and give women their damn pockets back. Oh, for the, oh, I see like how women's pants don't have pockets.